Hi guys, welcome to Pro Photo Tips. I'm Daniel and today we're gonna talk about ISO, shutter speed and aperture, also known as exposure triangle. Back in 2010 when I got my first DSLR camera, I was thinking I would get the best pictures. And as a new user to DSLR cameras, I was setting my camera to auto and I was trying to get some great photographs. But soon I realized that my photos weren't even close to the pro photographers that they were using the same camera on the internet. I was so frustrated with my photos and then I started to search on the internet why did my photos look so bad. And then I found out that the auto mode wasn't for the people who are passionate about photography and it's just if you want to take a quick picture and you don't care about the settings. I discovered something that if you want to get some great photos you should go on the manual setting and to start do your own settings. That was my first time when I first read about shutter speed, ISO and aperture. First thing we're gonna talk is aperture. Aperture is also known as f-stop. So if you want a large aperture you have to go down all the way to the smallest f-stop. For example like 1.8 or 2.4, 2.8. If you want a small aperture, then you have to go all the way down to f22 or f18 or whatever. How does the aperture affect your photo? Let's say if you have a large aperture, your photo will be much brighter, but then you have to take care because your focus will be just on certain thing and all your background will be blurred out. This aperture is really nice for portrait photography where you want to have just your subject into the focus and then your background would be blurred out. Now if you want to go all the way down to f22 you have to make sure you have your ISO set correctly, the shutter speed and the f22 aperture it's really good for landscape photography because you'll have everything in your focus. Now let's jump straight into the shutter speed. The shutter speed is like a blind for your window. Uh, it lets a certain amount of light to come into your sensor depending on how long is the exposure to the light. Let's say your camera is set to the highest shutter speed that means that everything which is moving will be freeze. This shutter speed is really good for the sport photography or where your subject is moving very fast. Also you have to take care about your aperture and ISO because your image it will be much darker on a higher shutter speed. If you go all the way down to one shot of 30 seconds or 25 seconds your image will be much brighter but then you have to use your tripod because on 30 seconds your sensor will be exposed to much more light and you have to make sure you don't have any motion blur. This setting is really nice for the night photography. Now let's talk about the last thing and I think it's the most important thing, the ISO. ISO represents your camera sensitivity to the light. So let's say your camera is set to 3200 ISO. This setting will affect your image for how bright will it be. Now you have to take care with your ISO because this will affect your image quality. Let's say if you have too much ISO set, you will have some noise on your image. Now you have to check your camera what capabilities have with this ISO. I use a Nikon D700 and I think uh, my ISO, maximum ISO I can go and the image still looks good, it's 3200. Now if your ISO is set to 100 or 200 or 400, I think you will have a much sharper image and really nice clarity and you won't have any noise in the image. But now you have to combine all the three together to work perfectly for a really really nice picture. When I'm shooting outdoor I use my ISO as low as I can like 200 or 100 and then my aperture to f stop 4 and my shutter speed is set to 800 of a second. Now if you are on low light condition, like let's say in a dark room, I use my ISO to 1600 and my aperture to f2.8 and the shutter speed set to 60th of a second, obviously using a tripod. Now you may ask, how will this work for me? Well, nobody said that photography is just certain settings, you set them and you took the perfect photo. You have to practice and really get done and try. Now I have a last tip for you guys. It's regarding the SD card. I'm sure that 
most of you have lost their SD card. So if you want to never lose your card anymore, you've got your lens cup, your camera cup, and you just put your SD card in there, you lock it, and then you'll never lose it again. That was it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already, and please press the like button. Don't forget, if you want great shots, keep practice. It will get better, I promise. Until next time, good luck.